Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we continue our inventory or stock management system, Google Sheets. What we're going to do today is to optimize the cost and the price setting up. What do I mean? If you remember what I did last time is that I bring always the same price with a VLOOKUP, but this is very, very ineffective and it won't work in many cases. Why? Because if my Tenacity t-shirt, I was selling it two months ago for $11, but now for any number of reasons, it is selling by 13. The thing is that now it will get 13 for the new purchases or sales, but for the old ones, it's going to change also to 13. So. The VLOOKUP method works very well if the cost and the price don't change at all. That may be the case in very, very few sectors, but in the majority, prices and costs will constantly be fluctuating. Okay, so there are a number of ways of doing this. We're going to get our hands dirty with some Google Apps Script code, because what I want to do is that once I open a new row so let, let's say here i create this new one now my cost price won't be a vlookup but it will be a code that it will look for the current price or cost and it will bring it here as a value so it it's like a stamp now i cannot change it only manually i can change it okay so we're going to remove VLOOKUP, I'm just going to leave this cost price. That's it. Actually, before, I'm going to copy all this and paste it as values with Control shift v Now, I don't have a formula here, but I do have a code. So, remember that last time we put this gray color to know that these are formulas. So what I could do is to leave this other column, not with gray, but with another color. Maybe, I don't know, a light orange or something like that. Just for us to know that this is going to be uh, manipulated by code. I'm going to delete this for now. And let's go to our script. Don't be afraid if you've never used AppScript. We're going to do something not so complicated actually we've already did a macro in one of the last videos so what we're going to do is we're going to here in my macros menu could also be i could add a new function and it's going to call set price and the first thing set price is going to do is to check where my user has edited something in my function will execute when I change the a cell in this specific column, in the column A of the sheet input output. So for this, we're going to connect with our worksheet with the method get active sheet. We're going to define a variable as worksheet and then in this worksheet, we're going to look for the active range or the active cell or the current cell. There are a couple of ways of doing this. And this we're going to call it or put it in a variable called active cell. So now what I want to know from my active cell is first in what sheet I'm in. So this I could do it with active cell dot get sheet and dot get name. So this will be my active sheet. And then the other thing I can know is the column. So I want to know the active column. This will be active cell dot get column. Okay, so I have my active sheet and my active column. And now I'm going to do a conditional with the function if. What if does is that it evaluates some conditions. And if these conditions are true, then we're going to do something. That's it. 
So my two conditions are going to be that active sheet is actually my input output sheet and, and we can call this active sheet name just to be more clear. And that my active column is the column number one because I don't want to do it every time I change this and I change this only when I change this it's enough. So if active sheet name equals to this name, let's copy it here. How do we connect conditions with this double number sum? And my second condition is that if active column equals to one, then we're on. So if this happens, what we're going to do is to look for the price of this product. Actually, I'm not going to do it with the column A, but with the column B. And we're going to assume that we always first select something here and then select something here. Why? Because it depends. If this is output, then we're going to look for the price. If this is input, we're going to look for the cost in this particular system we have built. Okay, so I'm not going to do it in the column one, but in the column three. So the first thing I need is my product name. So I also need my active row. Active row will be active sale dot get row. Why do I need my row? Because now with the get range, I'm going to look in this same row that the user is in. We're going to look in the column two for my hoodie and in the column three for if it's an output and input. And with this, we can go here and look for the cost or the price. Okay. So the product name will be in my sheet. That is this active cell get sheet. So again, we're missing another variable that is going to be called active sheet. Because remember, this is my active sheet name. I need my actual sheet. And here I could replace this by active sheet. Okay. So my active sheet, I can call the method get range to get a specific cell. This I can call it with a row and a column. The row will be my active row and the column in the case of the product will be number two. I'm going to get the value that this cell has. And finally, I need if this is an output or an input. But given that if my code entered to my function is because the active column is number three. So this has to be here. So what I can do is tell my active cell to get its value. Output will be active cell, its value. Let's get the value of the active cell. Okay, so I have my output and I have my product name. I tricked you because I told you it was a very, very simple code and it's not that simple, but if you know a bit of code, it will be very easy. And if not, you can just go to my Patreon page, copy this and paste it and that's it. So now we're going to look for my product name here in this product database. So for this, I need to, to get this data very easily. Here I can call my product sheet. And it will be ws dot. Actually, this is not get active sheet, but get active spreadsheet. Why? How did I notice? Because if I put here ws dot get sheet by name, look, you can see that I don't have my suggestion of get sheet by name. This indicates or it's a, a hint of some mistake. This is what I like about the, the suggestions because now I detected that I had this wrong, so I can leave this as get active spreadsheet. And now if I do WS dot, now I can get my get sheet by name method. It's the one I need. Okay. And the name will be product. Now in my product sheet here, down here, I'm going to get the data range. It means all this data, it starts in the A1 cell and it goes to the last column and then to the last row. And I'm going to get all the values. I'm going to call this a product, product data. I'm going to leave this product data alone. I'm just, I just need for now this column B. So how do I get this column B? 
I could do this with a map function. I'm going to to my product data array. I'm going to apply a map function. And this map function, it's complicated if you haven't heard of it, but what it does is in the case of this table, it goes row by row. And for each row, it returns what I tell it to return. So what I'm going to tell it to return is just the column B. So I'm going to say return the element number one. Remember, column A is element number zero. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I just need number one. That's it. So let, let's see what does this return. Uh, first, let's save this in a variable. We can call this product list or product name list. This is what we're going to log, our product name list. And maybe we can also log our product data so that you can see the process. Let's save it. And we're going to stand over here. Let's do another one. We're going to stand here and let's run our set price. So you can see here what it did. First, my product data, it just got all these values. Okay, so here I can see it, the, the header and each product. And then when I did the map, it just returned all the product names. That's it, no more. Actually, we could have done it with the reference or with the product name, remember we have both. Maybe it's easier with the reference, so let's do it with the reference. So here I'm going to change this to zero and my product name. Uh, I don't need my product name, but my product reference. And it will and it will be get range in the active row and the column number one. Let's save and run again. But we have to stand here for this to work. Again, let's run. And here I have all my references. So I need to look for this specific reference. So this, how we do it with the index of method. So to my product name list, I'm going to say, look for the index of my product reference. That is where in which row it is located. So we're going to log this. We're going to save. We're going to stand here and let's do again an execution. And it says number four, we're looking for TS004. So it's here, actually it's in the row five, but because for arrays, row number one is zero. So this is why here it's four. So I have to add one if I need to call a row, okay? I'm going to copy this here and to call this index or product row, I can call this. I'm just going to add one and that's it. Now, now that I have my row, I need to go look for my cost or my price. How do I know if it's cost or price? With this, if this is output, it's price. If it's input, it's cost. So we're going to do another condition. We're going to say that if output equals to output, then I can have another variable here that it's called a column to copy, something like that. And if output equals to output, then I could say column to copy equals to here it is uh, number seven. Else, if output equals to input, then column to copy will be six. That's it. And finally, now that I have my row and my column, here's my product row, here's my column to copy. Now I can get the value I need. So this will be in my product sheet dot get range in my product row and in my column to copy 
and finally get the value. I'm going to call this value to copy. And finally, I'm going to paste it. Where do I paste it? Here in my in my active row, something similar to this. So I'm going to say active sheet dot get range in my active row, but in the column number in here, one, two, three, four, five. In my column number five, I'm going to set the value to this value to copy. I think this is it. Let's save. We're going to stand here again. While we run it, I detected a mistake. And is I here, I have double equal sign. Okay? Double equal sign is only for my conditions inside my if function. When I want to assign to a value, it's just one equal sign. Let's save. And uh, let's stand here and let's run again. So I did it. 11 for my Macedon t-shirt. And if I change it, it's not 11, but it's 15. You can see that here it doesn't change. But if I do again, Macedon t-shirt and I say output and run it again, it says 15. But if I do TS004, but I do input and run it again, it will be five. That is the cost. So this is exactly what I wanted. However, the last thing missing is that I want this to run automatically. I don't want to go here all the time and run it. First, let's fix this. Let's clean this code a bit. Format. Let's remove all these spaces. I could remove these logger logs. Maybe there are some things here we can optimize in the future. But for now, we're just going to create a new function called onEdit. And it has to be called on edit. This is referred to as a simple trigger. And what it does is that every time the user edits something, it will execute whatever is here. And what I want to execute is this set price function. That's it. I'm going to save and let's try it again with this one. User hoodie, I'm going to put output and I can see that it's 15, that it brings my 15 from my wizard hoodie here. Now, I want to do some input of the same shirt. And it brings the seven automatically. And if I put some units here, everything keeps working perfectly. I just had to put the date and my stock. Everything here is running well. That's it. That's what I wanted to do. Now, the thing that may be missing is this cost because now it it won't work that great because i'm doing a vlookup in my product so i'm just looking at the last price but the thing is that now we are talking about very, a lot of different prices i think i can leave this for a next video because there are a couple of ways of how we can fix this for now it is just it is multiplying all my stock with the latest cost. It's not a bad method, but it's not 100% accurate. So in the next video, we can look at how we can do this much more exact. So that's it. I hope you like it. I hope this works for you. I think that with this, this is a much more precise system and it won't work much, much better. So if you like this video, you can go to the Patreon page and support me and download the template if you want. And if not, you can just subscribe and hit the notify me button so that you can be aware of the new videos every Wednesday. Thank you so much. See you next time.